Hello everyone, welcome to Crafty Garden. My name is Stephanie and you're joining me in the mountains of Vermont where I live with my husband, our two dogs, and our cat. Um, today is April the 14th, I was double checking, Tuesday, April the 14th. And um, yeah, I, um, I haven't recorded um, an episode in a while and I've been getting some messages from a couple people wondering if I'm doing okay. Um, and um, one person in particular, um, a Fibery friend, has been, you know, repeatedly dropping hints that um, she would like to see me um, record an episode. And um, yeah, not so subtle hints to uh, hurry up and record an episode. So um, yeah, I've been thinking about it, but just kind of um, not feeling like I had enough to share or just not feeling like I was in the right mindset, um, you know, with everything that's going on. So I have been home for, I don't know how many weeks now. <laughs> um, I haven't been leaving the house. Um, and we do actually, well, my husband gets groceries. Um, and then we're like really careful about, um, yeah, it's, this is April, 2020. For that note um so we're very careful about like bringing things into the house even like mail um we like clean everything we disinfect everything we have clorox wipes that we use um we did sneak out to um get like um five guys uh burger and fries one day and that was i don't remember if it was last week or the week before um, everything's kind of running together because we're all stuck at home, those of us who, um, who are not essential workers. So, I mean, I am an essential worker, I, but I can work from home, so I am still um, employed, I'm still working full-time, um, I'm teaching from home, so I am a uh, math teacher, and um, yeah, I, have, uh, I haven't had any period of time where um, you know, I wasn't getting paid as I would have normally been. Um, thankfully, uh, we are well looked after, um, teachers unions and, um, yeah. So I'm very thankful for that and very appreciative that, uh, yeah, I still have, um, the ability to do my job and earn a living and be able to pay our bills. And I know that not everybody is in that position and um, I just want to say you know I hope that you're doing the best that you can and uh, hopefully this thing um, you know we're gonna do what we have to do in the meantime but um, hopefully um, you know we get some kind of um, vaccine or some kind of medicine that can help people um, in the whole world return um, to some kind of normalcy so yeah, I think that's enough about that. Um, I do think there's going to be some amazing things that come out of this, and I think there already has been. Um, I think people are certainly more appreciative of, um, yeah, they're certainly more appreciating of um, different people. And um, I've seen it in a lot of different areas in different ways. Like, of course, nurses and doctors and everybody who works in a hospital Um you know, I have a friend I went to high school with. She's a phlebotomist. And um, you're going to see my dogs walking around. They just got fed. Um, so she uh, was saying, like, here is the list of all the people that work in a hospital that, you know, aren't really getting thanked. Um, and I, I, I can't remember all of those different things. But, yeah, if you work in a hospital, thank you for putting yourself at risk and um, helping others. Um, somebody's probably going to take his afternoon nap. Well, he's going to decide what he wants to do first. Um, so, um, yeah, and uh, it, it's just been great to see, like, even um, if you read comments on, or I've been reading comments on other people's podcasts that, um, you know, they're talking about, um, thank you for taking the time to record, thank you for making this video, thank you for putting this out there for us, and that is just so nice to see because, um, as somebody who does this, you know, uh, and, and doesn't make money from it and doesn't have ads and, and is just doing it from the desire to share, um, 
I think that's really sweet that people are saying that. Not that I'm asking for it, I'm not. Um, but it's nice to see it on other people's channels, um, to see that people are appreciating that, um, that we're putting this time and effort into um, sharing our lives and um, what we're up to and knowing that, you know, this is something we don't have to do. So, <laughs> um, yeah, because at times, you know, especially in the past, you get once in a great while, you get a really kind of rude comment um, on some of your videos where people just are a little bit too entitled and don't realize that, um, you know, this is, this is, you're not getting paid to do this, you know, this is not something that we owe anybody. So yeah, it's been nice to see that. Um, and also, <laughs> as a teacher, there has been um, some of my other teacher friends, I have one in particular I worked with last year that I'm still Facebook friends with, and she shares just memes all day, just all day. She just shares memes and different like funny videos and things. <clears throat> and so she shared a few like um, parents ranting about having to homeschool and help their kids at home and like dealing with their kids' behaviors and being like, thank a teacher. <laughs> and then, um, you know, there was this one guy who made a video about like, but especially math teachers, I don't know how you do it. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, yes, yes, actually, I feel that way too. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, yeah trying to transition to online learning and my school has been doing it a little bit different than other schools so we started with paper packets and um, that's basically ended. We're moving to more online with potential options for packets for students who don't have um, access. Uh, so that's that's the challenging heartbreaking piece of it is knowing that um, not all of our students, um, you know, have, um, the same resources at home and, um, you know, their parents, um, aren't, you know, maybe able to care for them the same, at the same level or, um, you know, we just, we have kids that we worry about. I certainly do. So that's, that's hard not seeing them, you know, really missing them and, um, their cute personalities and their, you know, silly things that they, they do and they teach you and, um, yeah. So I think it was kind of nice for the first week, maybe, maybe into the second week, you know, you felt like you were kind of getting a little bit of vacation away from it all, but, um, but yeah, I definitely have a lot of things that I miss. So, um, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about um, finished objects. So <laughs> I only have one and I'm wearing it. And I thought I would button it, but I actually don't normally button this at, all the way to the top. I usually kind of leave it like this. And uh, yeah, anyway, so this is my finished Felix cardigan. And I love it. I, I've actually had it finished for a while. I don't remember when exactly I finished it. But um, I was actually able to wear it to work a couple times. Um, and uh, before the school building was shut down. Um, and <laughs> I might have to let him in the room. Okay, so um, he is getting older. And sometimes we think he's not always, you know, quite at the same uh, level mentally that he used to be. Um, sometimes he gets stuck in weird places and it's, you know, all he has to do is go around and it's like he can't figure out how to go around sometimes. So, um, he's getting older. He's our senior, Max, our Husky. So, um, yeah, my Felix cardigan. Um, I have worn it a few times. Um, since I've been home, I have actually worn it, um, around the house. I think I wore it for a walk, maybe. Um, I mean, I haven't had anywhere to go in a while. There's a little pill. So this is um, knit out of Green Mountain Spinnery's um, Mountain Mohair, and I believe the colorway is Goldenrod. Um, and I am so happy that I bought this color. I'm just like, I can't help but notice that um, uh, my, I'm like coordinating with my um, sunflower painting that I did um, 
years ago. I don't remember when I painted that. It says love grows here and it's got a little sunflower with a heart growing on it. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, this is just, I think, the perfect yellow. I think uh, I feel really good in it. I really love wearing it. It's warm and cozy. Um, it's really uh, comfortable to wear and um, I think um, unless you're extremely sensitive to wool um, and mohair, it, this has mohair in it, so if you're sensitive to mohair, it's not a good choice for you. But if you are, um, if you're someone who is extremely sensitive, you might experience a little prickle. I do sometimes feel just a little teeny tiny prickle, but um, I can wear this. Um, I just have a simple tank under here. Um, and yeah, it's really quite warm. I can wear it like um, a, a light jacket um, and it's nice to just kind of throw over things. I don't tend to wear it in the house, um, just around the house because I like to keep the house kind of warm. So it's usually too warm for me just to sit around in it, um, but I, I love it. So um, a couple of things, maybe before I stand up, I'll talk about the buttons. So I used these um, Danforth buttons and they're pewter buttons and I had mentioned um, going to a Danforth pewter sale um, and purchasing some buttons so I had enough of these to use but they were not quite um, they weren't the recommended size but I thought maybe I could get away with it and I had enough of them and I wanted to finish it and I wanted to be able to wear it so I decided to go ahead and um, try using them but um, sometimes some of them I think these two in particular sometimes when I'm walking around will kind of pop off like it'll just come open so they're definitely not um, the ideal size for the the size of these buttonholes um, so what I wanted to use actually that I didn't have enough of was this button. Hopefully we can cancel the glare is kind of bad. We've got a lot of beautiful sunlight pouring through our front. Our, um, we have big south facing windows, but it's um, to me it looked like either like a little sheep or a goat, which I thought would just be so perfect. Turns out it's supposed to be a deer, but you know to me I see a I either see a sheep or a goat um, when I look at that and I think that this would be um, a perfect button for it but I only had four at the time I think I needed six if I'm remembering correctly so I had to order two more yeah I think I had four and I needed six so I ordered two more and then um, so I got these from the Danforth sale um, and they were cheap they were a dollar a piece or less I think maybe a dollar a piece or less um, and then a little less than a dollar I think but it doesn't matter so these two I had to purchase through Etsy because I looked around trying to find these buttons they stopped selling Danforth stopped selling these in their stores but they like supply buttons to other people that you could businesses that you can purchase from so um, I had to look for somebody who sold them and I found someone on Etsy um, and unfortunately they were just to me like after paying you know less than a dollar for this um, I think I paid with shipping and everything close to twelve dollars for these two and that was like ouch but um, I think it's really gonna make a beautiful um, when I get around to taking these buttons off <laughs> it's really gonna be quite beautiful um, with these buttons on there and these are the size that are recommended um, it's been a while since I've looked at the pattern, but I'm pretty sure when I looked at the pattern, these are the size that are recommended, and they're definitely bigger than these. These have like a little flower kind of design, and then this little sheep goat thing. <laughs> that definitely doesn't look like a deer to me. Okay, so I also have a bunch of other buttons in here I showed maybe a few episodes ago. I won't show them all again. I have little hearts and things. Um, there's like one random button like this that I got. That's super cute too. 
But if I put these on there, it would it would look too springy. And then and when I would want to wear this in the fall, I wouldn't want to wear it if it had little cute um, flowers on it, maybe. So that's it for, um, yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say about the, the button. So I will show you what it looks like. There's not much exciting going on. It's just regular cardigan from the bottom, but um, uh, I did steek it, and so maybe I'll show it to you, and then I will take it off and show you the insides so that you can see um, a little bit of the process of steeking and what, what I did with that. So, um, yeah, and I think when I change the buttons, I'm going to move the location. Um, I, did, um, I did the location like a little bit further over than, you know, I'm just going to move the new buttons so that they're sitting slightly closer to um, to here. Um, yeah, and I think that might help um, these sit a little bit better maybe. Okay, so I've got a little bit, I think it might help this little bit of gapping, but um, yeah, this is it. And see what I mean? Like sometimes the buttons pop off, so I really have to change these buttons. But um, yeah, uh, I think it's really, really cute, and I love it. I love wearing it, and I'm so glad that like I chose this. I decided to do this, and that I decided to choose this color. It's just like it's just been like um, such a great project. So. Um, I'm going to show you the insides. So, um, so I decided to add a steek, and the pattern does not call for a steek. So um, I had to. It's really easy um, when you know you're you're knitting back and forth. All you got to do is cast on um, a few extra stitches, whatever you're comfortable with. I think I did five, um, but you could do three. I would do less than three. Um, but I just cast on right, I mean, maybe an inch and a half, two inches after I had knit through all of the short row shaping. Um, I could have done it sooner. I just, I don't know. I just thought to do it later. Um, so I love the, I love the lace, the lace holes. Of course, that's what makes this pattern so popular. But, um, so the steek. I... I think I did five stitches and then um, I just knit a purl on each side. So um, when I started the steek, I did a purl, uh, purl stitch and then three knit stitches and a purl stitch. And the purls help the band curl in. Um, so a lot of patterns you will see call for that when they when they tell you to do a steek. And that's something that you can just add on your own and you can do like a backwards loop cast on or any kind of stitch that adds stitches. Um, so yeah, I when I was done I cut it open and I don't remember if I took photos or I definitely don't think I did videos or anything. But I cut it open but before, oh I did. Um, I took photos of, the, of it at my sewing machine because I actually did a zigzag stitch and there was just something in me saying like, why do a straight stitch? Why wouldn't it make more sense to do a zigzag stitch and it would cover more of the stitch and maybe hold it together a little bit better? Um, so that's what I did and it worked fine. I don't know if you look closely enough, you can see the zigzag stitch. And then over top of the zigzag stitch, you can see these kind of whip stitches that run the length of it. So I folded it over and then just use a little bit of yellow thread to um, whip stitch around the edges and you can't see it from the front side at all. What I did was I just very 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 lightly caught a little bit of the yarn um, from the from you know it looks like a pearl it's the reverse stockinette. I just caught just a little little bit of that yarn um, each time I each time I did that so um, from the front as far as I can tell it's it's invisible um, so I'm really glad I made that decision it certainly made this much quicker to knit um, I think I did this in like two weeks 
and I'm not a super fast knitter. Um, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't spend tons of time knitting every day. So I, I initially I spent a ton of time like doing the, the yoke because I was all excited. And I did uh, knit the sleeves first, which meant that um, there was no sleeve syndrome, no sleeve island. So yeah, that's, uh, I think I'm done <laughs> with this. I've talked about it for like 20 minutes. Um, yeah, I, I love it. And I think I would like to make another one um, with some of the natural Jacob that I have up there. Um, I have four colors, three colors, three colors of Jacob from a fleece I bought at New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival last year. And I spun up a lot of it, all of the colored wool, but I have a lot of the white left. And if I want to make the cardigan, I will have to spin up quite a bit more of the white. Um, and then it's just figuring out how I want to organize the colors. Um, I've thought about doing dark to light and having a lot of white at the bottom, which could be pretty. I've also thought about doing the reverse, doing white at the top. Um, I think it would be easiest to use up all of the the dark colors if I started with dark on top. The other thing I could do is do some sort of blocking, like do a dark section, do a white section, do a lighter section, do, do a white section. So I don't know. Um, I think the easiest way would be to do dark to light. And then however much white I needed extra, I could just spin up more because I have more of the white and I don't have any more of the, the, brown, the brown colors. Um, and yeah, that was purchased last year at the New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival, and I have a video on that, I'm pretty sure. And this year, the festival is closed, canceled. Um, I don't, I haven't heard anything about a virtual festival, although I have heard other festivals are considering that, um, which is interesting. The one thing that I, I definitely miss the most is um, my favorite thing about going to a festival, hands down, is going to the fleece sale like the fleece barn, looking at like all the different fleeces, getting to touch and feel them and pick one out or two, or occasionally three. <laughs> Usually like now it's just like, no, you can get one and that's it because you've got too many. Um, <laughs> and the one year that I bought the three fleeces, it was like two years ago maybe, I bought three fleeces at one festival and that was, I shouldn't have done that because I have barely touched those three fleeces. Well, I only touched one of them. The other two are like just sitting around. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, on to um, works in progress. Um, so this is my Hansel Hap. Um, that's the bottom of it. This is my Hansel Hap. There we go. <laughs> um, this is the pattern and they have two versions. You get both versions um, for the same price. Um, you don't have to pay for it twice, which is really nice. Um, so you get the full version and the half version. Um, the full version, they show the picture with it being used as a baby blanket, but it can be used as a shawl. And um, the half version, um, they show it, it's very beautiful, like yellowy, if I remember correctly, half shawl and it's beautiful. So um, I have made some progress on this since I showed it last. I have it crammed into my, um, this thing needs like a lint roller, but this is my Friend Supply Co. Um, town bag, town something. Um, the name of these, um, this is one of my favorite bags. Um, I'm really, really like this close to buying the plum one. Um, and I feel like everybody has that bag, but gosh, the plum is so beautiful. And I find myself cramming four or five projects in here. Um, not anymore, because I don't travel anywhere, but if I went anywhere, I would be like, I don't know what, pa what project to bring. So I would cram like three or four in one bag. Um, anyways, I think I could really actually use another bag, or I should make one, I don't know. Um, I kind of just really want to get that plum one. So, um... Anyways, I am currently on this color, and I'll get out the other colors, um, which you're going to see knitted. I've showed these off before. Um, so here's where I'm at. 
Um, I think the last time I, and it's, I think it looks so pretty. The last time I talked about this, um, I had ripped back all of the, I had actually knitted all of this brown section and I think just started knitting this medium gray color. And um, I had ripped it all out because I kept having issues with um, the stitch count. And so um, let me try to show you the lace. Um, and so I ripped that all out and then figured out what the problem was. I actually had, I was one stitch off in the beginning and occasionally, um, when I'm knitting rows, I, especially that lace row, um, I've just learned that I have to be very, very careful for some reason. Um, and I say some reason because here's my, um, host cardigan that I still haven't finished that sleeve on, but I did all of this lace with absolutely no trouble at all. And it's more complicated than what I'm knitting now. But for some reason, what I'm knitting now, I keep having issues with, even though the lace is easier than this. I had absolutely no trouble with this lace at all. Like, I don't even think I made a single mistake. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but it was, it was like really easy. And then I'm knitting this, which has a simpler lace pattern, and I can, you know, pretty easily memorize it. But um, I keep making just, like, being one stitch off. So I've just noticed when I get to the um, lace round right before it, I'll make sure that I have the correct stitch count for each. Um, this is divided into, I think of it as quadrants, four sections. And I just make sure that the stitch count is dead on for what it's supposed to be. Um, and I've listed the stitch count for each row <laughs> just to make sure that I do this right. Um, and uh, so I'll check that first, and then when I'm knitting it, I just need to make sure that I am paying attention. Part of the problem is that this color in particular is um, really heavy with lanolin. And this is hand spun yarn. So this is all, if you're new here, this is all hand spun. And um, this is almost all from one um, sheep named Hilda from Carrie of My Wool Mitten. She has a podcast and a little farm where she has Cordell sheep. And um, yeah, so these two colors came from Hilda. This color came from Weezer. And um, I actually have, you know, I've, I've almost um, messaged Carrie and asked if she um, she's going to have more of this this year because I would really love to have some um, dark chocolate Cordell um, wool. But anyways, um, these are so pretty, I think. Uh, I have a ton of this wool left, too. Um, I have at least a, a another sweater quantity. Um, it's hard to see what this looks like because I've got it all bunched up on the needles. It's basically a big square. That's the back side. But, um, yeah, I'm almost at the point where I'm done with this section of medium gray. And then I'm going to have... Um, this little section where it's going to go light, dark, medium, or light, medium, dark. I charted it all out, and I can show you that. Um, I'm going to try and show you um, a teeny section of the chart without revealing the pattern. I just kind of want to show you what I did for tracking. So I've got like this kind of color coded. I've got brown, and then this medium blue it represents the medium gray. And then the light blue represents the light gray. I just didn't have the correct colors when I was making this. And then I've also listed um, on the other side, I won't show that, but on the other side I have listed the stitch count for each um, section of, of the pattern so that um, at any point I can double check that my stitch count is correct. Um, but yeah, I think now that I've solved a couple of those initial issues, um, I'm enjoying this a little bit more, but I'm getting to the point where I'm almost at this section where I've got dark brown, medium gray, and then it's going to go light, dark, medium, dark, light. And it's going to be this little section where those colors kind of are short bursts, and then it's going to go back to a medium section, and then a brown section. Um, so yeah, hopefully, um, maybe I'll be done I don't know. I don't know when the next time I'll record is, but maybe um, I'll be done with the um, uh, the lace section. 
and I'll be working on the edging next time, hopefully. Um, so yeah, I kind of briefly flashed my host shawl, but there I haven't made any progress on that since the last time I shared it. Um, I'm at the same stage. I picked up for the sleeves, and I just need to, um, the last sleeve, I just need to knit that last sleeve. Um, so uh, I only have three works in progress, so um, I'll show you quickly the one you've seen before, and then I'll show you the newest one. Um, so this is a glove pattern that I am um, designing myself, and um, I was very, very ambitious when I decided to do this because I've actually never knit a glove pattern before. Now, I mean, these are extremely similar to knitting mittens, and the only difference is the fingers. So I, I went into like a lot of detail about that last time, but I'm designing this myself using um, the Selbu Mitten book, which is on my bookshelf, Selbu Mittens. Um, it's also called Selbu Vader in um, Norwegian. Um, it was originally published in Norwegian. It is about traditional mittens and even gloves. And um, I, yeah, I just, I really, really love this. I think these are going to be my favorite gloves ever. Um, if I can get around to designing, I have to um, chart the pattern for the fingers. And I am so, so nervous about that, having never knit them before. Um, and having to like work all of the, you know, the row gauge, um, uh, the stitch gauge, I don't think it's going to be like how many stitches for each finger. I, th I feel like I can use other patterns, see what they did and figure out what makes sense for my stitch count. Um, and then I don't think that's going to be hard, but I have to figure out how many rows to knit for each finger and trying to fit a design that is similar. I want a certain design on the fingers. Um, that's kind of kind of mirror what's happening down here and the back will um, follow this exactly so um, I still haven't charted any of that out unfortunately um, but I have made some progress on the thumb so if I can show you this um, I am kind of knitting these um, I started knitting the thumb way earlier I had picked up um, I had put some waste yarn in here that's a little technique that is my favorite for mittens is to knit in the waste yarn and then pick up the stitches and remove that waste yarn. Um, and I wanted to make sure that that thumb was, a, was in a good spot. So I actually um, took out that waste yarn quite early and started um, working on the thumb. Um, oh, and I don't remember if last time I had these on, on these Addy stitch holders or if I still had them on the DPNs. I think maybe I had them on DPNs, but I watched a video from, actually I believe she's a Norwegian girl and she makes um, like how-to videos. Um, and uh, she has a couple videos on like Selbu socks and Selbu mittens and even like how to knit um, fingers on Selbu gloves. And that was just so helpful um, seeing how she did that. And my dad's calling, I have to call him back later. <laughs> um, so anyways, um, it was so helpful seeing her process, but the neatest trick that I picked up that she uses are these Addy Stitch Holder um, uh, clips, which um, I bought a few years ago, maybe four years ago, I don't remember. Um, and they are like perfect when I go to knit the fingers because you can just slip off, you know, like maybe nine stitches or however many you need from each side and then you use your DPNs to knit that finger and then the stitches, the stitch holders hold um, the rest of it and then when you do the next finger you just slip off the amount that you need and then it holds the rest so it's really 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 handy to have these for um, knitting gloves. So let's talk about the thumb. Um, I have mirrored, not mirrored, I have um, continued the, the palm design um, up a little bit of the thumb and then I, I love this palm design. I don't know what it is about it, but I love it. And then um, I am going to do, you can see these kind of, um, it reminds me of like an arrow or, you know, 
um, yeah, you can kind of see it's, I'm, I'm kind of got this, this pattern going on here. You can see that there. And it's actually, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be one of these, um, they're sort of like, like hearts. And then I think what I'm going to do is, um, do one that is going, they're going to go in like opposite directions. So in, in effect, they will be mirrored. Um, but I've already charted all of that out. I'm not going to share that because there is a, there's a, there is a desire to turn this into a pattern that I would sell. Um, I, it, that also scares me to, to put a pattern out there and have, um, yeah, um, the whole, the whole process like is kind of, um, I don't know. It would be, it would be awesome to do, but, um, yeah, I think it's just scary doing something new. Uh, and then, yeah, I, I worry about like people needing a lot of help or, you know, wanting to make these and not having enough experience to make them and, um, you know, working a full-time job and just feeling like I, I don't want to be available. People are going to want my help 24 seven or message me at Ravelry and be like, I don't understand this. Um, <laughs> And I'm just, you know, like you see other pattern designers like, um, Ellie, she has, um, a Ravelry group where she has other people help her answer those kinds of questions because she, you know, is working on her thesis and she doesn't have time for it. But I'm like, I get, I get that. <laughs> so hopefully I finish the thumb up and, um, I love these. I really just need to work on them. I need to sit down and chart the fingers and... Yeah. Um, okay. So the last work in progress is, um, a new shawl, which I, um, maybe talked about. Um, I don't remember. It's the, um, Bunad shawl, Bunad shawl, um, by Ellie of Skandier Knits. And, um, I just, she shared this with the fringe and was just talking about how it's such an easy, simple knit and I had to have it. So I bought it like immediately um, when she recorded that episode where she shared it. And then um, I was going back and forth about like wanting to spin some yarn for it. So um, I actually spun up, I think I spun this first, I'm pretty sure. Um, this is some um, Shetland. This is um, Layla, and I used this same exact color in my Shetland Colorwork project, which um, I promise one day I will put some, make some effort on that. Um, but anyways, this is this pretty kind of mousy, taupey brown. Um, but I decided that I wasn't liking the way that this yarn was spinning up. Um, I could just change the settings and, you know, use a different whirl or use my other wheel or whatever and make a different yarn. But I just, I kind of decided I was going to do white <laughs> instead. And so I spun this yarn, which is um, one of my new fleeces. Um, in February, we went and I shared some of that, I'm pretty sure, um, of going to Painted Null Farm and their shearing day and standing in the frigid cold barn. And this is Circe, um, and she has a very, very long stapled um, fleece with um, a lot of, um, she, has a, she has a double coat, so um, this is a firmer medium Shetland where it's, it's still very soft, it still has a nice hand, but it's, it's definitely more of a medium firm feeling than some of my my softer Shetland, like this is a little softer, although it's, this is spun at a higher twist because I did it on my Shacked Reeves, which everything I spin on my Shacked Reeves has a higher twist and I can't seem to replicate. Um, I think it's because it's in double drive. I can't seem to replicate the, the softer, um, spin and ply that I can get on my Lindrum, but that's also because I'm, um, my my new wheel is um, made for high speed spinning and um, it's a new wheel still to me so I'm still learning um, how to use it to its uh, its best 
So yeah, I spun this um, and it just has a beautiful sheen um, and luster to it that is just, it just looks like it glows and it totally looks like to me, it's quite, um, let me just show it next to this. It's got quite the golden cast to it. Um, not quite antique wool, um, but it looks to me almost like a like a white gold. Isn't it pretty? This is some um, Cormo Cross that I got um, when I bought my Cormo fleece. I got a little bit, I think this is Cormo Luster Cross and this is quite lovely. And it's just a little sample that I spun up um, on uh, probably my Shacked Reeves. I don't even remember. <laughs> It's such a little sample. Um, and maybe I could use this for some mittens or some little teeny project at some point. But yeah, um, I didn't spend enough of this to make the, um, the the Bunad shawl. I forget how she says it. It's been a while since I've heard her say it. So um, it's like a traditional style Norwegian shawl. It has this kind of boxy um, shape instead of a pointed um, more of a triangular shape at the bottom. It's got kind of a rectangular shape to it. Um, so I didn't spin enough of this. I'd have to spin more. And so I was finishing this up um, right after I had finished spinning this um, Lincoln wool. So this is Lincoln long wool and it's from a fleece that I purchased for the Shave em to Save em initiative. And um, I actually, um, yeah, I sp so you can see this, I had to rip out um, a little bit. I had some kind of mistake with, again, with the yarn overs. It, they just looked, some of them looked like they were just in the wrong spot slightly. And so instead of trying to drop down and fix it, I was like, I don't want to do that. I just, I'm just going to rip it back. Um, and so, yeah, I did that. But when I finished spinning this, I just had a very, very strong desire to see how it knit up. And simultaneously, I had just bought this pattern and really wanted to cast it on. <laughs> so even though I didn't have enough of this, um, I decided to, to cast on this. And I was like, even if I'm just playing with it and I don't really make it, um, I could see what this knits up like and see if I like it. And then I just decided like, I think I want to make this whole thing out of out of Lincoln. And Lincoln long wool is not considered a soft wool. In fact, it is known for being scratchy and itchy, and it has a very bad rap. Um, <laughs> but um, I just had a very strong desire to um, try and use it and um, make something beautiful with it, and. Um, I don't know, learn how to, how to use long wools in a, um, in, in something that, you know, people or I would, you know, actually like. So anyways, I brought a little bit of the, um, the wool and not raw, it's been washed, um, but in lock form. So you can see it's got a beautiful gray shine with these pale, uh, almost white tips. Here's a little section that's a little bit darker. I have a ton of this wool. I have way more than I know what I'm gonna do with. Um, and upstairs I have, I pulled out a lot of the light gray, but <clears throat> the fleece actually has quite a bit of darker gray and, and even t um, a little bit of black. But I'd have no idea what I'm gonna do with that. Um, so I did um, card, drum card, a bunch more of that um, Lincoln long wool, so um, when I did this one, I used my new wool picker, and then I drum carded it. Um, but then there were just like, it wasn't as the, the roving that I got from it wasn't as nice as if I were to comb it first. And, um, and so what I ended up doing was combing this, all of the locks I combed which I'll be honest was not fun. Something about this fleece is just not nice to comb. It's it just doesn't want to comb very easily. I think I need um, to get like the, the 
combs that only have one tine, one set of tines. I have um, I have two sets of combs now. I've actually never showed you my new combs, um, which I, I, I have so much to talk about. I'm not going to get them out. But I got the new um, super fine combs, which have three rows. I've had the extra fine. I'm going to question everything that I'm saying. <laughs> they have two rows. Um, but having a set with one rose is better for more, um, you know, wool like this. Um, anyways, so I combed it all and it felt like it took ages. And then I drum carded it. And the reason why you're like, why would you comb it and drum card it? Um, the reason why is that there are subtle differences in the, the light grays. Um, and I really don't care for like pulling and um, striping of the colors. So you can see here, there's like a little bit of slightly lighter gray right there, but it's not like there aren't in your face chunks of light gray and then dark gray or medium gray. Um, so there's gonna be some slight natural variation, but I don't, I just, I think like I would rather put in the work and effort into making a really nice blended color and not see those big chunks of, um, of pulling color. So I think it looks really beautiful. And I, I think it has a nice shine. It almost has like a metallic look to it. And I think it would look beautiful with, um, with like a black, a black shirt or a black dress or something like that. So, um, yeah, this should be, this plus this should be enough to actually make the whole shawl. And if not, I have a lot more of it. <laughs> but I think, um, yeah, this shawl, she she picked a dark color for this, which makes it really hard to see. Um, you can go check out her videos, of course. Um, but it has fringe on it. And I am absolutely doing the fringe. I am very excited about the fringe. So, um, yeah. So that's my newest um, knitting project. Okay. So from here on, I have um, uh, I have a new fleece, and I've started working on it, and I have some acquisitions, some new things that um, I've been. So I've been keeping here. I'm gonna put this back in here. I've been keeping this in this bag, which is which is housing um, an unfinished sock that I was hoping to make. Christmas socks for my husband and then um last night is funny I don't know I I'm, I'm like very chatty so <laughs> last night um I decided to like knit on this and he didn't notice <laughs> because I had after Christmas because I figured out like there was no way I was getting these done in time for him for Christmas and so I showed them to him and I even tried them on his feet and then last night I was knitting these he, he has like Halo nights and I was like, why not? Last night I played Halo with him. And then while I was like waiting for their game to start, I was knitting this a little bit. And he has completely forgotten that I was making this sock for him. Cause I asked him, I was like, do you know what this is? He's like, it's a sock. And I was like, yeah, but do you know what it's for? And he's like, it goes on your feet. <laughs> I was like, I'm making it for you. <laughs> He completely forgot. And I even tried it on his foot. And when I mentioned that, he's like, oh yeah, okay, maybe I remember. Um, but yeah. Um, I So I put on a teeny tiny bit of progress on this sock. I don't remember the last time I showed it. I would like to finish them. I think these are going to be really great socks. And I think they're actually going to fit him really well, which I'm happy about. And um I don't have, I have like next to no desire to knit socks right now. Like I really just don't, but, um, I think I would actually like to use this pattern, um, for myself and it's from the Kate Atherley, um, book, uh, her sock book. It's on that bookshelf. I don't remember what it's called. Um, and I had talked about it at some point. I just don't remember. I don't remember what episode it's been a while before Christmas. <laughs> Um, okay. So yeah, I've been double, see, I, I put in, I put more than one project in a bag because I don't have enough projects. I don't have enough bags for all of my projects. Um, okay. 
so let's see um I think I want to talk about my well I don't know if some people don't want to hear about like fleeces and buying fleeces you could skip to um I'm gonna have some acquisitions um some things that I bought a new book and um yeah if you want to hear about that you could just skip the fleece section but I'm gonna talk about my new fleece so um as I said earlier I am um taking part in the uh save them to shave them <laughs> shave them to save them um uh initiative um that helps um protect and conserve uh, endangered sheep, um, certain breeds of sheep. Anyways, so I have been collecting a lot of the different um, fleeces, and I have started recently following um, the Facebook group for it, um, and that has been really nice to see. That I, there's more activity on there than there is on the Ravelry group, unfortunately. Um, yeah, there just seems to be more activity on the Facebook group. Um, but I saw that somebody had posted, um, a, her name is Ann Camper. She posted, uh, she's a farmer and she has uh, Lester Longwell. And Lester Longwell is, um, I'll put photos of the fleece laid out on, on my living room floor. Um, but Lester Longwell is... Um, it's in the Long Wolf family, and um, I was thinking that it would be very, very similar to my Lincoln fleece. Um, I just, because it's a Long Wolf, I just had this assumption that it would look and feel very, very similar to my um, Lincoln fleece. And at least for my two fleeces that I have, they are not at all alike. The only thing that is similar is if you look at the um, ignoring the color for a second, if you look at the locks, I mean the locks look kind of similar. Um, you know, I've got this little section of slightly lighter gray here that I pulled out because I'm doing the blacker, the more black color right now. But I mean, the, the locks look kind of similar. You know, the length looks similar. The Lincoln looks like it has more shine, but it's also lighter. And that black's absorbing more color. I saw some of uh, same same farmer um, showed some white that she's working on, and the luster on it was insane. Um, it has a little bit of luster, but I think because of the color, it's not as noticeable. Anyways, the this fleece is so different than the Lincoln. Um, I I really really love love this fleece. I was nervous about getting it and thinking like I'm just going to have another big long wool fleece and you know not know what I'm going to do with it like my Lincoln but this is just so lovely and I really love the color I thought I was getting a lot of this kind of um, medium dark gray but um, I actually got um, uh, the fleece has a lot of black or near black around the edges it has a lot of white um, throughout it, but um, it when you when you spin it, it comes off as a really beautiful black. Um, it's extremely easy to comb, unlike my Lincoln, which is kind of a pain to comb. This is so really enjoyable to comb. Um, this is the kind of thing that like I could just sit and comb for a couple hours. Um, because it's just nice to comb it combs easily and it feels like butter combing it um, so I yeah I was just like um, kind of blown away by this fleece it feels so much softer than I ever expected um, it just it has a lovely like kind of silkiness to it that is just wonderful to feel um, so I have been, I, I put a bunch of it in this, that's all, so this is all washed and ready for combing, and I just put, um, there's about, um, the weight of this is roughly five skeins of fingering weight, <clears throat> um, or maybe like four, four and a half with combing waste, like maybe four and a half with combing waste, because this is, 
I am getting quite a bit of combing waste with this. Um, if you don't know what that is, that is where you've got little bits of the um, of the wool that you don't want to put in your yarn because it's shorter or it's got um, it could have uh, vegetable matter or little things in there. So I have um, been combing quite a bunch of it. <laughs> I've just been keeping it in this metal bowl. So I've got these little nests of this beautiful charcoal, dark, you know, black. And yeah, I think I'm going to comb a, you know, maybe a little bit over 100 grams and then spin that up. And yeah, I would love to spin up about four or five, um, skeins of fingering weight yarn, um, probably fingering weight, I think, um, to make uh, probably a cardigan. And my, my thoughts are um, kind of going towards an open, not a, not a, not a button down cardigan, but like an open front drapey um, cardigan. I don't know though. Who knows at this point, it's still too early. Here is the world's teeniest sample that I um, spun and knit. So here's, um, and then of course I knit it with the teeniest, tiniest needles. So it's so hard to see and it's rolling because it's mostly stockinette um, stitch. But it's got pretty, pretty shine to it. And um, it's just, it looks like a beautiful black. Um, so I think that would be such a pretty like throw over um, cardigan. Um, if you know of any good patterns that are kind of in that open front um, idea um, for a cardigan that are good patterns, I don't want anything that flares out crazy at the bottom though because I, I just don't like that on my body type. So yeah, um, I'm very excited about that. And I have been just loving um, working with this and combing it and, um, and playing with it. Before I forget, though, um, there is actually one downside. So this fleece was, I had to work with the lady to get a fleece that I could more reasonably afford. The first one I looked at was going to be just too expensive for me to justify. So she, I usually pay somewhere around... $15 a pound for a fleece. This lady um, has very nice wool and I think, you know, she is maybe, you know, asking a good price for her, for her wool, but um, for me, it's just more expensive than I'm used to. So she wants $18 a pound and that just meant that like I couldn't get the first fleece that I was looking at because it was just going to be too much. Um, you know, with shipping and everything, I, I was like, I couldn't, I could not justify spending that kind of money on another fleece. So I got a smaller fleece and I'm so happy I did because I actually really, really love this fleece. But, and the color I think is darker than the other one. Um, and I've just been loving the black. <laughs> but um, there are a couple downsides to this fleece. Um, one is I have found more second cuts than I would like to. Second cuts are like when you're combing or you're processing it and then, you know, like an, an inch chunk of it will just be cut and that shortens the staple length of the, of the fleece. And I've just found it's not terrible, but it's, it's more than I would like, um, you know, second cuts. And that's not that big of a deal. Um, the other thing, the other issue that I'm having with this fleece is that there is a lot of dandruff in it. Um, and some sections I have just completely set aside. You're not going to be able to see it. And I think, I think most fleeces have some dandruff, but the lighter color ones, you don't see it or notice it. If, if it's a white fleece, you're not really going to see it. Um, but being this dark, look, you can see that. See that right there? Now it'll it'll come right out. I can get that to fall out. It'll um, flick out, or comb out, flick out. <clears throat> but not all of it gets out. And uh, 
So I am um, the worst spots. There are a couple spots that are that are that's got just too much. Um, I'm setting those aside, and I'm gonna flick comb. I'm gonna flick those separately, <laughs> and then if I can get a lot of that out, then I'll combine it. But um, yeah, if I find a spot that's bad, I just separate it for now, and then um, I'm combing the rest. A lot of it's coming out with combing, and the shorter bits that at the end when I'm pulling all of the the wool off of the combs, the shorter bits seem to have the most of it. So a lot of it is staying, you know, in that waste that I'm getting rid of. But um, it's definitely a noticeable thing. Um, I think it's it's workable though, and I think the the quality of the the my love of the the feel of it, the silky softness that this has, and the color. Um, I'm still very much in love with this fleece. And I think between combing and spinning, a lot of it's going to fall out. <clears throat> and then when I go to finish the yarn, I'll be sure to um, aggressively whack it <laughs> so that maybe a little bit more will come out. And that does work. I have had dirt and all kinds of things fall out when I do that. <laughs> um, so that's one of my newest acquisitions. That's a new fleece. I also bought a new, um, a new, um, some other wool for the uh, Shave Them to Save Them initiative. This is, I don't remember this lady's name that I bought this from. I also saw this through the Facebook group. Um, this is Florida Cracker. And Florida Cracker is, besides having a hilarious name, um, is one of the more rare, or if not the rarest breeds in the United States. And um, it's very interesting. Well, the quality of it is all over the place. Um, you could get, a, you know, a, a decent wool, um, or you could get quite um, a weak, trashy wool. No, I hate to say that, but um, I think that's the reality of it. And this one's pretty nice. Um, here's a little nice staple length from it. Um, it has a very dry, kind of chalky feel, and <laughs> this sounds funny, but reminds me of like um the feel of it reminds me of like um colonial <laughs> i don't know this is so random and has probably no i don't understand why i have this feeling but it it feels like some kind of um wool that you might have had a you, you might have had some fabric made out of in in the colonial era <laughs> i don't know um it feels like a more antique like the the wool i don't know um, but it was actually really, I saw, um, somebody had purchased the same wool from her and had, um, maybe hand carded it and spun it and it looked beautiful. They did a great job and, um, it actually looked like the quality of it was nice enough for me to buy. Um, I have bought some Gulf Coast Native, which is a very similar, um, wool, but the Gulf Coast Native, um, was so trashy. I, I don't I have it's upstairs and I have zero desire to do anything with it. Anyway, so this this is actually pretty nice and um I think she washed it even before she sent it. Um so yeah at some point I'm probably going to um I don't know either comb it or drum card it. I'm not sure. Um but I have just been too excited about my new fleece to play with that. Um, okay, so the last things that I'm going to talk about are a couple, um, hi honey, <laughs> um, the last thing I'm going to talk about is a couple of, um, new things that I've got. So I placed an order with Jameson and Smith, um, a while ago, and I ordered, um, a cone of lace weight, um, two ply lace weight yarn. And I ordered this um, this little yarn kit from them. So every year they come out with um, a range of colors. And this is um, their newest one. This is their Northern Lights collection. And they're hosting a, in their Ravelry group, they have a Northern Lights um, knit along, crochet along. Um, and there are some really inspiring, um, beautiful um, things that people have been making. Um, 
So this is their, you can actually use any of their yarns that you want. You don't have to use these exact colors, but they put together this kit and I just loved this, this range of colors. I, I love these colors. I love these blues and these purples and the pop of green and even this, like, it's kind of like, it, it looks uh, maybe too peachy uh, on camera. It's more of like a spicy kind of cayenne. Um, looks like maybe like a cayenne or paprika. Um, it's really, really pretty. And I, I love how it contrasts with the blue. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to make with this. Um, I was thinking about cro doing a crochet blanket or like a, um, like a retro granny square crochet blanket. Um, but at the same time, um, I have... I would also kind of like to make a um, a sweater with Jameson and Smith wool. And I showed this before in the past, but from the Wooly Thistle, I had actually bought one of her, um, um, the, their Baker's Dozen sets um, with just random colors that you can get. I actually have another one of those greens that was in that kit. But you get just all kinds of random colors. I've already shared this before. But, um, yeah, so I have quite a bit of Jameson and Smith wool that I could use to make a cardigan or sweater or jumper. And so along with that, I have two books that go along with the, the two things that I bought. So this cone of lace weight yarn and, and, the, um, and the two ply jumper weight yarn. So months ago, I don't even remember what month, um, months ago I bought this heirloom knitting, um, Love Darg Shetland shawls, um, by Sharon Miller. And I love this, this image of this, this lady. Um, and I love that you can see all of these details. Like she's got this thick winter, it looks like a thick winter, um, skirt and um she's got a lovely like shawl draped over her shoulders to keep her warm um and they've got this picture in color in here there's the back of the book and this is a photo of um i think the love darg shawl um there's directions for multiple patterns in here and the one that i kind of want to make is hold on. I'll try not to show too much of it, but it's this one. Um, the Cobweb 2010 version. So there's there's different versions. They're all really similar and related. There's also the 1910 one. Um, the different patterns are kind of re recommended for different weights. And actually the weight that I have is heavier than, <laughs> slightly heavier than the ones that she recommends. She really recommends super duper fine um, yarn. I cannot imagine going any finer than this. Um, it's, it's a very, very fine lace weight. And I had started knitting the border or, you know, just playing around with knitting the border because you start with the border. Um, and it's, it's a lot of fiddly little knitting. <laughs> um, I think I, you know, I had this idea that I wanted to make a lace weight, you know, traditional Shetland um, shawl. But um, I think I might not be ready to jump into um, this level of lace knitting. I think I can do it, you know. Um, but I don't know how much desire I have to do this much really fine, delicate um, lace weight knitting. So I was actually thinking about it and um, my Hansel Hap shawl that I showed earlier is a similar construction. It's not the same, but it's similar and it has, um, you do the border last on that one, but this one you do the border first. And the borders are actually super similar, except that this one has just a lot more like lace sections. They almost look like, it almost looks like there'll be hearts in this. Um, if you look at 
that one, you can't see it on that one. If you look at this, see how it, they almost look like hearts? So this, this edge, this border edge, um, I could do this without all of the lace. I could just have it be plain garter and it would still have a pretty little pointed edge. I could still do like maybe some lace um, edging like that, but you know, not do this, this heart kind of shape. Um, and that might just make it this much more doable for me and more realistic that I might actually finish it. But I, I think it would be so beautiful. And um, I don't know, I think it would be like an heirloom and um, I don't know, I hope to one day um, make one. I just, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's, yeah, it's a very ambitious um, project. Uh, so, and I think like, you know, we've already gotten married and everything. Um, so, um, you know, I, I wouldn't have like, I wouldn't wear it for a wedding. Um, uh, but, um, if I, if I was a new bride, it would be beautiful to wear, um, like a little shawl. Um, but we, you know, maybe one day we'll do a 10 year anniversary. We've been married for over six years. So it's not that far away. Um, maybe one day we could do like a 10 year anniversary and um, that might be something beautiful to wear. Um, I don't know. I think, yeah, it would just be, I would love to have one. So <laughs> the other thing that I um, purchased was this um, old book. It's The Art of Fair Isle Knitting. And I found some garments that were made using this book um, through searching for projects made with Jameson and Smith on Ravelry. So you can search projects made with particular yarn, which is kind of handy when you're looking for like, you know, if you really wanted a pattern that doesn't necessarily made for this, but maybe was... Um, um, a lot of people have used this. I don't know. It's just, it can be inspiring to look at um, other people's projects that have used the same yarn that you want to use. So I did that. And I found a couple patterns that um, I really liked. And there's two of them in this book. But this book is no longer in print. Um, so I did buy a used copy. Um, and um, I got the hard cover. There's a paperback version and a hard cover version. And I got this one. It's really pretty. I actually haven't bothered to look at that yet. Um, take the paper off, the jacket paper. But um, the, the price for the paperback and this one were like a dollar difference. And it, it might have even been slightly cheaper to buy this one. Um, so yeah, I got this. And um, there are two patterns in here that I really like. So this is the first one that I found, but it's not the one that I love the most anymore. This is the first one that I found and really liked. Um, and it's called the Hillswick Lumber. Um, it's a cardigan. And um, the colors on this are okay. If you look at the Ravelry projects, and I have it favor favorited. <laughs> I favored, favorited? <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Um, I've, uh, yeah. It's in my favorites on Ravelry. And if you look at some people who've made this, there's some beautiful ones. And they're all, like, most people have done them in similar colors, if not the same colors. And there's a lot with, like, just pretty greens and, yeah. So this one's nice. I think I would maybe make it. But um, since looking, you know, at the, the other one and, and looking at it in this book and um, other people's projects, I really, 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 really like this one. So this is the gray cardigan, and um, I just really like, I, I mean, I love these colors. I don't think I'll use these colors. Um, I think I would kind of like to use these more, um, these kind of blues. I think that would be really pretty. Um, and yeah, use my new kit and maybe some of the other ones that I've got, and um, yeah do something that's kind of bright and colorful. Um, but I love the, I love the cardigan that how it's got the V and, um, and I think this book came out in the nineties. So I, 
I still think that this is something that I would wear today. And I was, I was born in, in 1990. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I really like it. Um, it's got like a mix of, um, floral and stars. So like it has a flower band here and then a star band here. I even thought like if you wanted to, you could just do all stars or all, all flowers. Like here you could do the star pattern. It would probably be very easy to change that. Um, but yeah, I think this might be nice. The only thing is, is that I don't have enough of like a, of a more background color. Um, so that was, that had an all over kind of red feel. Um, I have just a lot of different random colors. So I would need a background color for most of it. And I think, um, I would like to do like maybe buy a cone of their, um, to apply jumper weight. Um, just deciding on like what color would be the hard part. Um, I thought about either doing um, like the navy color that's in this kit or I could go light and do like this light blue. I think that would be so fun. Um, so yeah, those are just kind of some thoughts that I've been, that have been going around in my, my head. Um, and then I also printed out, this is related because um, Shetland Wool Week released their um, 2020 hat, and um, this is the new new hat. They do a, a hat every year. Started with the Babel hat, which I haven't made and would love to make, but um, they they do a free knitting pattern every year, and they usually put together kits for it. And I can show you that actually. Uh, there's a couple of like different colorways they put together. Um, so since I have so much of like different random colors, um, I could probably put together my own little little color scheme for this hat. And I'm guessing this hat would probably take a few days. Um, you know, if you really sat down and did nothing but knitted this, it'd probably take a couple days. Um, but if you wanted to space it out and work on it a little bit, maybe three, four days to make it. Um, so I might make that. I don't know. I'm not. I don't have a desire to like cast it on right now or anything. But um, it's a free pattern, and yeah, uh, I might. I think it's. It would be. It would be nice. I would wear it. Okay. So I think that's that's almost everything that I have to talk about. The last thing I have to talk about. I have my. I'm trying not to show the pink lipstick that's on this back side of this mug. Um, this is a lighthouse mug that we got. We went down to North Carolina, um, Kiratuck Beach Lighthouse, and this is, uh, we've seen a lot of North Carolina, I'm from North Carolina, and we've seen a lot of their lighthouses. We love to go down there for a vacation, but right now there is no going to the beach, so I just have to daydream. Okay. Um... The last thing I want to talk about is an old project that I've been hoping to um, pick back up and work on. So um, it's been a while since um, I remember working on this like two Christmases ago, um, and I, I have a you know a video where I, I have at least one or two videos where I talked about this. Um, going to pick up the wool, the fabric, at the door mill store. And I had put together Instagram videos that are still on my, um, on my personal Instagram um, on how I like started this and everything. But this is my first um, braided rug that I have um, not finished. <laughs> and it's, the, it's the first one that I've ever um, made and um, I haven't finished it yet. Um, and I, it's just sitting in the corner and patiently waiting for me to one day pick it back up and finish. Um, and then, you know, since I'm stuck at home all the time and I know people are like safe at home, but you know, I, there are days where I feel just sick and tired of being home. And, um, we all, I know a lot of us feel that way and I'm staying home and I'm being safe and I'm protecting others and myself and my family and other people's families 
by staying home, but that doesn't mean that, you know, I can't, um, that I'm not fed up with being, being here all the time sometimes and just like wanting to just go somewhere and get away. And, you know, even like we've talked about just going for drives and not getting out of the, the vehicle and just going for drives. Um, <laughs> my husband says that going to the grocery store is like a vacation for him. He really loves going to the grocery store. It's so nice to get away from the house. <laughs> Anyways, so now that, you know, like, I am sometimes really bored. I'm just bored. I feel like I've watched everything on Netflix, and I've watched all of the Hulu shows and all of the podcasts. So one thing I'm hoping that I'll pick back up again is um, this rug, which is not that far from being done. It's actually really a nice size right now. Um, and so... I thought I would just share this in the hopes that maybe I'll put some work on it. Um, I've got a lot of this green. I've barely used any of this green here. So I've got a lot of this green that I think my idea was to work back towards darker colors at the edge. So um, I was starting that process here. So I will use up like the last bits of the, of the lighter colors and then eventually work towards having like maybe all of this blue and green um, be like on the edges. I don't know how much bigger it's going to be. Um, it's certainly going to get bigger for sure, maybe. I have no idea because this is my first one. So um, the amount of uh, fabric that I have left, I'm not sure how far it's going gonna, it's gonna to get me. But this is so beautiful and I, I definitely feel bad that, you know, I got so far on this so quick. Um, I think what happened was I put my sewing machine, I had my sewing machine down here um, on my kitchen table when I was working on it, and I was doing like a little bit every day, and I really got a lot of this done so quickly, but then um, I think I went to sew uh, like a garment project or something, don't lose that, <laughs> um, and I had put my machine upstairs. And then because it wasn't as readily available, it wasn't right there on hand, and I didn't want to like drag this this thing upstairs. And so this, I really need this has to lay flat while I'm while I'm sewing on new new pieces of. Every now and then you have to sew on new new um, strips of fabric. So they're just strips of fabric that I rolled up. Um, so yeah, that's that's my excuse for why I never finished it. <laughs> But I do think it would be helpful if I just drag my wheel down here for a little bit, keep it on my kitchen table, usually like on the back side of my kitchen table. My kitchen table is a catch-all. And I've had like, um, I have department meetings at my school and some of, <laughs> they've seen a little bit of the, the messy craftiness that is my house. And I'm like, I don't care. I just don't care. <laughs> There's wool everywhere and I'm sure they're like, what is this crazy lady doing with wool on her on her table? And and then you can see like my spinning wheels and everything in the background. I'm like, I'm just gonna be me. I don't care. Um, so that's all I have for you guys today. I hope this um, maybe helped brighten your day and that you enjoyed getting to visit with me for a while. And um, yeah, I, I feel better having done this like because I have been I've been wanting to do it and putting it off and not being sure what to say or, you know, not just not feeling up to it. Um, I do think a lot of us are kind of um, grieving um, for our, our old lives and um, we're getting used to this. Some people hate this, this saying, but the new normal, um, at least for now. And um, anyways, I've been on here too long. Um, I'm going to, uh, to get off here and maybe I will record again soon. Um, no promises. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, bye guys. I will see you next time.